Now, ahead of the planned $6.2 billion Eurobond issuance next month, traders at UBA say they expect reduced buying interest in the bonds market. Ifoma Oyejekwe, fixed income trader at UBA, joins me to tell us more about the markets this week. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to join us. I'd like, us to, I'd like you to quickly just bring us up to speed on uh, if there's been any outcome from the DMO's uh, treasuries auction today, 155 billion uh, in treasuries auction. Do you have an update? No. Um, thank you very much for having me, Esther. So, no, there hasn't been any updates yet. We normally expect um, the results to be released um, later in the evening. So, probably around 4 or 5 p.m., we should be expecting the results of the auction. Now, you've talked about a reduction. Let's move to the uh, bonds market. And, of course, this euro bond that Nigeria is seeking to, uh, to uh, sell, $6.2 billion uh, in September, you said that this is going to lead to a reduction in buying interest in the bonds market. Could you elaborate further on that position? Well, we know that um, the federal government has been um, decreasing, declining yields. They've been reducing stop rates um, for the bond auction from the beginning of the year. And we also know that they are a little bit under pressure to um, hurry up with raising, uh, to completing their debt goals for the year, having raised about $1.9 billion out of $2.4 trillion and also the $900 million billion supplementary budgets. And with the $6.2 billion euro bond, um, um, uh, set to be issued next month, it's possible that they might not raise up to half of what is being offered because we'll be competing with other um, euro bonds of emerging markets with better credit profiles, um, better economic indices, as well as, you know, better rates. So it's possible that, you know, with all these um, points that uh, rates might not um, experience a, uh, an increase, but rather experience decline in the markets. Okay, now, staying with the euro bond, with the receipt of the recent receipt of the 3.5, I believe it was 3.5 billion US dollars from the IMF special drawing rights and this possible inflow of 6.2 billion, should we expect a dramatic uh, impact on the FX market when all these monies come in? Uh, I don't think so, no. We shouldn't expect a dramatic in impact because uh, what the CBN is there for is to ensure a stability of uh, our currency. So I don't expect any dramatic impact. They would find ways to, uh, to ensure that the Naira remains stable. But definitely this will boost the reserves. Oh yes, definitely will. Okay. So all right, then let's hear your forecast for the rest of the week. We're at midweek right now. Uh, just a brief summary of what we've seen so far in terms of uh, between the bonds and the treasury bills market and your forecast for the rest of the week. Well, the beginning of this week was very illiquid. The market has been in a ripple from yesterday and also Monday. But today we received inflow of FAC payments, so that should generate uh, a lot of relief in the market. So from now till the end of the week, we expect more increased buying activity as uh, this FAC inflow has come to relieve the illiquidity seen from the beginning of the week. All right, let's talk about, I want to take you back to today's uh, treasury auction. I was talking to a trader earlier today and she talked about uh, the fact that in terms of expectations that she's, they're expecting uh, lower rates uh, this time, especially on the one year paper. And that, you know, we've seen this trend where uh, demand continues to outstrip supply, uh, thereby giving, you know, putting the DMO at an advantage, you know, when it comes to rates, where, what it can sell, what it wants to sell, and the rate at which it wants to sell. And, because, and she says, looking across the market, investors don't have, aren't particularly spot for choice when it comes to other investment options. So is this thing, is this trend going to continue? If we're somewhere at 7.3%, 7, 7 how much lower can this rate go? How much further can the DMO push this rate? Well, that's yes to be seen. I mean, we've seen 2 3% in the market. So yes, uh, the other trader is very correct. Uh, demand far outstrips supply, and we are not exactly spot for choice in the market. However, there a point might come where you know the low rates might not encourage people to invest, and then they would find alternative investment, maybe put back their money in the stock markets. But until then, we expect a further decline in rates, given uh, the DMO has uh, much more leverage than participants in these markets. I'm happy you brought that point up because we, I know that this has happened before and not to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe sometime last year or the year before that, but I'm trying to remember what it was. So what would it take, what, what exactly would happen? What would that catalyst be that would force a pushback on the part of investors and force the hand of the DMO? Well, if your, if your profit uh, doesn't seem to be commensurate with the cost, 
then that would push investors to look for um, other ways and means in which to make profits with their money. And at this point, for the DMY, I know that lower rates means uh, a more sustainable debt service uh, for, the, for the fiscal authorities. And we know that CBN also has been pushing on that front. But would you say, looking at how that has played out at the market, how investors are interpreting key macroeconomic indicators, do you see this turning out to be a win-win situation for the DMO and by extension, the fiscal authorities keeping this for as long as possible. We know that we have huge debt on our hands. The euro bonds will be a brief respite, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, we still have a large debt, that we're, large debt that we're, uh, portfolio that we're carrying. So how do you see this playing out? It's definitely a win for the DMO, a huge win for the DMO. However, on the part of investors, um, given that uh, inflation is also at a galloping rate, uh, it's not a win for them. Okay, if I could just quickly take you outside our, our shores. We're, we're waiting for, we're hearing that uh, for the U.S. Fed, tapering might come <clears throat> rather quickly, quicker than uh, everyone else expected. And we know that it usually has ramifications or implications for uh, the broader emerging markets or even frontier markets like Nigeria. So if that does happen, if the Fed does pull back, what kind of effect or impact should we expect on our own end of the, of the market spectrum? No, tapering might come, but um, in the conference uh, recently held uh, and then the um, Congress uh, almost passing Joe Biden's uh, audacious spending goals for infrastructure, we might see um, capital flights move into more developed and safer markets and that uh, we would see uh, more capital flights in our shores.